Well, Machakos Governor Alfred Mutua is among few Kenyans who have already declared their 2022 presidential ambition. Mutua is serving his second term and says he wants to turn around the image of the county before going to the country's top seat. In 2022, you know, 2022 is very interesting to me because some may not like to this, but you know I'm running for president in 2022. And I want to be able to know that the party hand is done at the time I run. You know, and God's will and people's will, the God's will win the presidency when the party done is done. All right, so you, are you still uh, having your eyes on the ball for 2022? You started off very vigorously after yes. the this year mm. uh, but you seem to have slowed down are you still no, I've not slowed down i'm concentrating on work everything is about strategy my brother you and i are the same age and our beautiful lady here and uh, you see kenya has been in what you call a transition period mm -hmm. since independence of setting up if you look at the leaders who've ruled our country from independence and their children you find Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, our first president, was in the independence struggle, pre-independence. He laid the foundation for our country. Raila Omolo, uh, Ogingo Dinga, the first vice president, was there fighting for independence. He actually refused to take over Kanu Said until Kenyatta came out, pre-independence. Mm -hmm. Our second president, Daniel Arap Moy, was in the LEGICO, the Legislative Council, the parliament of the colonial era, pre-independence. Mwai Kibaki, our third president, was the executive secretary or the secretary general of KAU before it became KANU in 19, early, late 1950s, 60s. Pre-independence. Now, we got in a new constitution and they have done a very good job of laying a foundation. Now, Uru Mwigei Kinyata, the KANU era of pre-independence, the son of the first president, was the first president to be given the new constitution, which he has now laid a foundation for the new constitution. Mm -hmm. We have been in a move, in a transition. Raila Omolo Odinga fought for democracy. You know, some of the democracy and the, and the freedom we are enjoying, you and I are enjoying today, are because of the struggle of Raila Omolo Odinga all that time. But you see, he's been fighting from that period of pre-independence through the 70s, 80s, locked up by Moy, up to today. And they have done a wonderful job. They have laid a good foundation. Others like uh, Mwishimua William Ruto, YK92, they laid a foundation in their own way at that time. Now, we cannot continue laying a foundation forever. This country needs change. Look at the leadership in the world. Look at the leadership in France, leadership in Canada, leadership in the world it needs young, energetic leaders who are now going to move from laying a foundation to building walls. We need a pilot that is going to take that aircraft from just taxing mm -hmm. to actually let it fly. Kenya has a lot of potential. Presidents ruling this country should not be about rewarding individuals should not be about uh, maintaining the status quo. Okay. It should and, be about and, and, flying and this what, country what it, to a new level. And what is it that you'd have to offer Kenya as the president of Kenya that, you know, would be different? You've mentioned the, the, the transitional times that we have gone through, but what is it that Alfred Butua would offer Kenyans? Again, let's use Machakos as a sample. Let me, let me tell you what I would do. I would offer my concept of Mandeleo Chap Chap. A clean system with integrity. We are losing so much money, and I'm supporting Uru Kenyatta's move the fight for towards fighting graft. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the money is lost at NYS, for example. You are talking about 10 billion shillings. That is equivalent to my budget in Machakos County. Now, imagine what I would do if that NYS money was given to me in Machakos. I want to show Kenyans that we can have rapid development the way they did it in Singapore, Malaysia. Uh, the way they have done the other tech economies in the United Arab Emirates, in Dubai, in Qatar, in Doha. We are able to actually have speedy development, take care of the money, come up with innovative ideas, save the money, and create employment for our young people. Mm -hmm. You see, we are still in an agricultural state. We need to go into industrialization and manufacturing, which is what Uhuru is doing. That is why Mandeleo Chap Chap is pushing a, a bill to say that we want national government money committed so that every constituency has a factory. What is the impact? If you build a small factory, it means that locally all the young people get something. And then you've got that triple effect. So you're creating jobs everywhere. You watch football. Mm -hmm. You watch Croatia play. Correct. Do you know that uh, less than 20 years ago, Croatia was 
third world country kabisa. Yugoslavia had broken down. The former Yugoslavia, mm. Bosnia Herzegovina, all that war that went on. Mm. Croatia was nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Okay, so, and so, then let, let me just tell you. So what did Croatia do? Croatia got very good leadership. So they decided to become the hub of industrialization in Europe. They did what I've been trying to do in Machakos. They looked at their land, they gave free land to investors. Today, as we speak, manufacturing of motor vehicles all over Europe and the ones being shipped to America is done from Croatia. Croatia has come within 25 years from being poorer than Machakos, not Kenya, Machakos, to a country that now can loan Kenya, the whole Kenya, money. Okay. So 